the revolution starting inside An instrumental part of a gore worldwide A gore worldwide, a gore worldwide Counter economics, agorist strip Black market click, move a quick flip Can't regulate this, agorist strip Black market click, move a quick flip Can't regulate this, agorist 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 this is Brandon. I wish I could just start talking about, uh, you know, just we're just started off right away just by talking and having a normal conversation, but like, uh, like some of these big guys like Rogan or something. But, uh, but yeah, I don't really think enough people know about us yet to do that. So, um, anyways, this is the Agorist Next podcast. I've got Dag with me. How you doing, Dag? I'm doing all right. What you mean, like, instead of doing, like, an introduction? Yeah, instead of doing the whole introduction, just drop into, like, a conversation. Mm-hmm. Like, we're just having, like, a regular conversation. But the I think the problem with that is that we're not, um, like, as well known for that. So Yeah, well, it's, I'm like, well, I mean, people already clicked on us, so they have to at least have known what they were trying to listen to, I'd hope. But, like, I feel there's, there are a couple <laughs> podcasts. There's a couple podcasts that they just, like, roll in. And part of me really, like, loves that um and then my ocd kicks in right well well, here's here's what i love about it is because especially when when, like we have guests and you know i'm sure that everybody you know or a lot of people like know this the thing that happens but like you know when when they first come on before we start recording you know we have a little bit of conversation but it's like man i hate when like we have a great conversation before we hit record you know so part of me just wants to hit record as soon as everybody's there and then you know just in case something great happens but then it sounds like an editing nightmare so (laughs) So I don't know, but, um, but yeah, I, uh, you know, part of me really likes that, that, that just roll in, but I, I don't know. I don't really know how to pull it off effectively. So here we are. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm doing all right. Sipping on, sipping on some bourbon here. Um, get the obligatory weather talk out of the way. Pretty, uh, pretty warm in your regions, uh, right now, huh? I know it was pretty hot for me today. Yeah. I just checked. It's like uh 95 here. So yeah, I think we're hitting the nineties this week. So. I feel you, brother. I feel you. Cool, oh, cool. Yeah, L- literally. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I well, mean. Yeah, no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> the, the temperature, temperature. Water. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, my goodness. Um, so what, uh, what are we talking about today, man? We got, well, I don't want to just make this about uh, Russia, right? Um, But I think with what's going on, I do want to kind of touch on it just to give you guys like heads up um you know get in your bunkers and stuff but uh but yeah i I think it'll be good to talk about and i want to talk about something that the media is not talking about it um mainly uh you know of of course they're going to uh you know leave stuff out and uh not give you the whole story that's really their job but you know in in the end that's 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 really their job is they're really just a mouthpiece for what the Mm -hmm. government wants propaganda arm yeah, propaganda arm of the government. So we're really just living in like um Soviet style propaganda or uh you know, even like Nazi Germany propaganda mm-hmm. with the uh, gobos and stuff, but um yeah. So we've got that and then we've got DAOs and we've got a couple of interesting DAOs. Uh D A O's. Yeah, DAOs. Not T A O's. DAO, the religion. Although that is pretty right. cool too, if you're into that kind of thing. I don't even know if it's considered a religion. I don't know. Whatever. Sorry, that's for another day. <laughs> Decentralized autonomous organizations. Yes. Uh, you know, there's yeah, always yeah. Oppor- I think that there's there's a lot of opportunities in the crypto market. So stick stick around for that. But with Russia, I don't really want to go over any articles and stuff. Um, basically, I just want to go off of like you know what I've heard and and I I. You know, I'm, I think it's, I think we're living in a very interesting time. And now what the media is not, not telling you guys about this is that the areas that Putin is, is invading in the east, eastern Ukraine, those areas actually want to be a part of Russia. So, uh, and unlike a lot of other uh, pundits and stuff that said, or people that said, okay, you know, I don't believe, uh, you know, Putin or, or Russia is going to go into these places. I actually thought I was the crazy one that, that thought he would. Uh, but I, I kind of understand what happened with, 
with um with Crimea and it it's kind of the same situation where Crimea wanted to be a part of Russia so um so if, if you really you know it's 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 really just the same situation here these eastern uh provinces or or states I, I i can't remember which one it is in ukraine but they they actually wanted to be a part of russia and i haven't seen that in any of these uh articles that go over this at all they're just saying he's invading so um so there's that and then you know it's it's funny how all these countries are like so pro democracy but uh but uh but once russia you know says that they're pro democracy and and you know, Guatemala, you know the majority wanted Iran. to be with them. Yeah, <laughs> the list goes exactly. on and on. <laughs> exactly, you know, and, and the majority of these con- the, the, the majority of these people wanted to be, you know, they're pro Russia. They wanted to be with Russia. Uh, you know, they have a problem with democracy when uh, when it happens with Russia. But but um, yeah, they have yeah, a problem I, with I, democracy I, here too. When you pick somebody who isn't on the, you know, the two offerings, <laughs> you know, like the, like what was the, was that the 08 or 2012 or whatever Ron Paul thing where they, they'd be like, Oh, first place is, you know, Santorum. Third place is somebody else. Just completely jump over Ron Paul. Like, no, 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 that's not an acceptable, <laughs> that's not an acceptable choice. Yeah. We're going to black that one out. Yeah. We're, uh, we're, we're not. F- they're not for uh you know they're not pro democracy when it happens to the uh to the the what is it there's a, over 2 million people protesting right now in in Ottawa i mean you think that would show some some numbers there but uh, but yeah they're not yeah. pro democracy on, on that one so did uh, did anything happen this weekend with that i remember on our our episode last week uh you know we were we were talking about it and they were um you know they were supposed to be gearing up for you know, a big crackdown this weekend, but I really didn't hear much about it. But again, that's kind of, you know, the news, what does the news report, you know, and is what do they, you know, what do they want us to hear? Yeah. So some who horses, knows if we would hear some, anything about it. Some, some cops on horses, uh, like trampled some people and oh, fuckers uh, stuff like that. And then I think, um, Trudeau said another, you know, outrageous, uh, comment, but, uh, but yeah, I haven't heard too much on that. So, yeah, so yeah, so, I, I think the I think the the thing that did surprise me about this Russian situation was that was that Germany actually is going along with the sanctions. I didn't I didn't know if Germany would actually go along with it or not because they rely on um, Russia but, for uh, energy. So they that that was the the thought that maybe maybe they well, wouldn't go along with the sanctions because they want to stay friends with Russia, right? Yeah, most of most of Europe um most of Europe depends on Russia, I think, but, but Germany, Germany is kind of in a different situation. They, they're actually building like a natural gas pipeline and mm-hmm. I forget what the name of that is called. I think it's like the Nord 2 or something. And it's in the, it's in the, um, uh, what region is that? Is it the, the Baltic, uh, Baltic seas over there? What is that? You're asking the wrong person, buddy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure My geography over there is pretty poor. <laughs> uh, well, it was funny too. Like I, I was trying to like find some articles and stuff about the situation, and it's just everything is just like this, like you know, mainstream news. And I'm like, like I, it's gonna be trash. Whatever I read, it's gonna be like lies and like bullshit and misdirection. But you know, like I always say, it's like when you when you know how to read the articles, you can kind of tell what they're trying to steer you away from. You know, but I, I got to sit down and read like several of these things. It's, I don't know, man. It's, it's a lot of stuff. I feel like yeah, I'm well trying to learn about it. I got this one right. So, um, so this pipeline goes from, if, if you look at Google map, Google maps, um, it goes somewhere from like, if you look at near St. Petersburg somewhere over there in the Baltic and it goes all the way down to Germany. So it'll be in the Baltic. So, um, but yeah, uh, p- apparently, and then, then it will go towards, it'll go somewhere towards like Rostock or, um, I don't know how to pronounce any of these German cities, but Griefs walls or something. Come on, give uh, it a shot. <laughs> uh, yeah. Some, somewhere in there it'll go, it'll go down there. So, and, um, and yeah, it's, it's, Germany is kind of in a unique situation there, um, because, 
because yeah, they're they're trying to do shit, and I guess they didn't want to do it, but they're they're kind of in a. a... Well, the 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 U.S. is really pressuring other people to go along with it. So yeah, Na- you know, NATO, yeah. And the U.S. Yeah, and, the, yeah, the U.S. has whatever power to you know over every country on the planet to make them do what they want. So. Um, yeah. And so that, that happened like recently because they said, Oh, they're evading. We're doing sanctions. I think that that happened like today or this weekend or something. Mm-hmm. Most articles I was yeah, finding seem pretty within, recent. I think yesterday or yeah, yesterday probably. Okay. If you're listening to this, it will be two days ago, but, uh, two or three days ago, something like that. But yeah, definitely recent. And, um, I think you brought up something really funny before the podcast was that uh you know it's funny how they're like you know russia surrounding them on all three sides and it's like well (laughs) russia surrounds them on all three sides so i mean you know that is like their area it's it's funny how the the news brings up um brings up stuff like this Mm -hmm. yeah they, they they can just okay let's take the truth and then how can we frame it to make it you know, however they fucking want it, you know? I mean, it's, I mean, I give them, A, I give them credit on having the flexible morals. I honestly miss the days when I had more flexible morals. Life was easier, right? <laughs> like, I'm glad that I, you know, I'm glad that I don't, uh, I'm glad I'm a better person now and all that. But like, you know, like back when I was like a vacuum cleaner salesman, which I did for a period where I was like 17, like you really got to like get that salesman mindset and like, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, I'm getting off on a tangent here. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I really like, like, they've got, the, they've got the really flexible morals, but like the way that they can take something and sit down and be like, I don't care if I'm lying. I, I just don't know how you can so blatantly just like lie to people or want to articulate, articulate or organize an article or, or piece of media to where it definitely paints a picture of a certain side, you know, not one to at least be a little bit fair. You know, it's like, I don't understand people who like cheat in like games, like sports and stuff, because like, it's not fun anymore. Like to me, like if I was like cheating in like a a sport or something, it's not fun. Right. I don't know. I just don't, I just don't get it. But I mean, I don't know. I don't know. They're, they're obviously good at it. You know, it's probably, it's probably the money. Like I always say, like everybody has really, uh, really strong, like morals or principles until they hear the sound of that briefcase cracking open, you know, (laughs) like we all say, like we do this or that, but until you see that million dollars cash sitting in front of you, it's e- it's easier said than done, right? So, hey, man, I mean, these fuckers in the media are making millions and millions of dollars a year, and they don't seem like they're that bright. So, you know, shit. You know, good for them, I guess. Right. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not like how to um. <laughs> I'm not sure how to like really like feel about the situation, like um, you know. I'm not really for government in general. So I, I don't really, I wouldn't want to, if I were one of those people, I wouldn't want to be part of Ukraine or Russia. Uh, I think that, um, that the people who do want to go with Russia might have a little bit of buyer's remorse, like the, like a lot of the people in Crimea do. So, so I think, uh, I think there is that, but, um, but yeah, we, we should definitely move on to some other okay. topics here. Oh. Good luck to everybody in, you know, the Ukraine area. I hope you don't die. Um, you know, my final thoughts is I just want the, you know, U.S. government to stay the fuck out of all these, um, whatever the hell's going on over there because it doesn't really affect us. And, you know, so, yeah, you know, it's, whatever it's happens, not really happens. any of their, yeah. not really much of their business. I mean, yeah. Be, be, beyond the fact that, you know, the U.S. government's constant, constantly tempting fate with nuclear armed countries, you know, it, it really wouldn't concern me, you know, if they would stop doing that. Whatever the fuck happens over there could happen over there. And of course I feel for anybody who runs into hard times because of whatever is going on over there. Like that sucks. But obviously the US government over being over there isn't going to help the situation. So, you know, let's let's stop funding that if we can, however we can. And okay, I'm done. We can move on. Cool, yeah. So we've got the talking about that. Um, yeah. Do uh, do we? I don't want to assume that everybody knows exactly what a DAO is. So you know, let's let's talk about that for just a second. Um, you know, like I, I guess I guess the simple thing to say would be like, 
you know, it's like a, well, a decentralized autonomous organization, right? Um, which could be anything from running like a company, you know, to uh, like crowdfunding. It seems like a lot of people are using it sort of like a crowdfunding thing, but it's basically using like smart contracts to smart contracts to facilitate all that. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, I guess the first one was in 2013. Uh, by the one of the Ethereum dudes, and they've been sort of yep, evolving I remember since the, then. I think I think that one was originally called DAO, if, if I remember right. They just called it the DAO. Okay, if I, if I remember right. But um, but yeah, I think eventually somebody there was a problem with the code, and somebody hacked it, and um, and then you kind of saw the price of uh, can't remember if it was Bitcoin, but you definitely saw. The price of Ethereum dropped quite a bit when that happened. So, oh, you know what? You're right. They, um, yeah, they like forked Ethereum and like rewrote yeah. the code or something actually because of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read about that earlier. And Ethereum went two ways. Uh, you had Ethereum Classic who just stayed, you know, wanted to stay with the original code, and then you had Ethereum today, which uh, which has the uh, the code where they, you know could prevent that from happening now i'm not sure why you'd want ethereum ethereum classic if um if there was like some kind of security issue like that i don't i don't know all the all the details behind it i probably should but um but yeah it's really hard to keep up with the whole crypto space as a whole because it's yeah it's getting to the point where it's like you know nearly impossible so so with like with stuff like this, like the like smart contracts and DAOs and everything, like it's it's really fascinating. What's really interesting to me is, and maybe some people are just really good at this, and it's more daunting to me than it should be. But like the amount of like forethought you have to have when you write this stuff, you know, I just feel like you have to go over every scenario, you know, of what could happen because you're writing like a contract that like is a computer is just going to facilitate, right? Like, do you even have the ability to go in and fix something if you realize something got set up incorrectly? I guess that yeah, depends on how it's you, written, huh? <laughs> yeah, you definitely should be careful with how when you do write smart contracts, you mm-hmm. should definitely be careful with um with, with with how you write them and uh and you should definitely try to exploit it yourself before you um you know can you like you can you, like uh, run like a test one or something, like you can like write the program and then like simulate everything happening to make sure it works. I don't know much about computer programming, so um, you know, I, I don't know, it just it just, it just it just seems daunting to me. Well, you, yeah, you could you could before you like launch something major, you can probably do like uh you know write write something else that's similar and mm-hmm. and and see if it works. Yeah, yeah, first. play it out, simulate. Oh, if this happens and then this happens and then the the if this then that you know kind of thing and or <laughs> logic gate kind of thing for executing contracts. I don't know. It's real. It's really neat. I um. I'm really excited about this kind of thing in general, as far as like the crypto space goes, just because this, I think, is one of the big things that makes, you know, not just government like obsolete, but the whole stupid cronious system around it. You know, the fact that we even need to hire lawyers that cost hundreds of dollars an hour to, you know, to write a contract for me selling my truck or something to somebody, you know, like, it's just like, things should just be simpler, you know, and I think they would be, if I think they're intentionally made more difficult. Than they should be. So we have to hire lawyers and, you know, more government agencies and more layers of bullshit. So this is one of the, the kind of things that really excites me is that with things like smart contracts, I, I just feel like we can make a lot of those sectors sort of obsolete or just easier for the average person to, to use or mesh with or utilize. You know, you don't have to be wealthy yeah, or you wealthier can... to. You know, to, yeah, you to, you can eliminate lawyers. You can eliminate, mm-hmm. uh, or, or at least greatly reduce like, them, or make them simpler. You know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah, mind like, having a lawyer help me write a contract. You know, but it shouldn't cost 150 bucks for something that you know takes you know an hour. I don't know. I don't know what the prices are. I mean, hey, you okay? You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to be a full blown lawyer to do things like maybe write contracts. Maybe you can just have a specialty in doing that. You know, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I'm talking out of my ass. It's not my area of expertise, but I just feel like this can make things simpler and more affordable for everybody. Yeah. I mean, I definitely do want to, I mean, I definitely would want to eliminate lawyers because I mean, you know, especially, especially lawyers that would write stuff for, uh, 
you know, that you'd need for government. I definitely want to eliminate all of those, those lawyers. I don't sure. really have, uh, I don't really I, have I, a problem with like third party arbitration, but again, I want to eliminate as many steps as possible. So like, like instead of like paying a truck driver to go from point A to point B, if I could have that truck be completely autonomous mm-hmm. or, you know, just like a robot driving it and not having to pay that, I mean, that would be beneficial to not only me, but the the people that I'd want to sell those products to. So, right. Of yeah. Course, if, you if know, if of I course, could it's eliminate cost, but it's cheaper. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah and then, well, and that frees that truck driver up to do another job, you know, to do a better job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. You're, yeah. you're eliminating cost there. So I think, I think eliminating costs, you know, in terms of lawyers, uh, would sure. be great. Sure. Well, and, yeah. I mean, and this, this could even eliminate. Yeah. Of course. Everything's of course. better post scarcity. Exactly. Yeah. But, but, uh, but, you know, accountants would be great. I mean, th- this could eliminate, you know, most of your accounting needs. This could eliminate, uh, things that we right, or greatly reduce it, you know, at the least. Right. Yeah. Uh, many different sectors. I could see this just completely, uh, greatly reduce. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think it'd be great. So, so we go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, if we want to go ahead and get, get into this article that, um, that she would send me, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. This, uh, the headline here is uh, a Dow, a Dow is trying to buy the NFL's Denver Broncos for 4 billion, uh, by the Broncos Dow is rallying netizens i guess that's like citizens but on the internet to pool funds and buy an nfl franchise so this is kind of like a crowdfunding kind of use of this then right i mean it's it's, i mean i I guess that's what we call it and then i guess yeah group group ownership too it's not not necessarily just crowdfunding because they you know these people would have some sort of ownership stake so that's that's actually really cool it's kind of like an nft-ish kind of thing it's kind of like an nft-ish crowdfunding thing i guess I don't yeah, know, I'm just making I don't up really words know. now. <laughs> 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 oh man! <laughs> so, so basically, they're trying to come up with four billion dollars to buy the Broncos. Um, it looks like they're trying to raise one billion through the Dow, and then fund the other three quarters through like traditional funding means of other investors and stuff. But, um, but pretty neat. Yeah, it's uh, well. And I'm a I'm a Denver Broncos fan, so this is very interesting. And um, so when I saw this in Decrypt yesterday, I, uh, I was like, "Yeah, I, I really want to talk about Dows." But um, but yeah, I don't really watch as much football anymore. 2020 kind of killed it for me. Um, uh, killed everything. Yeah, it killed everything. But uh, but yeah, there's just so much more important things to pay attention to, and. Um, you know what they say about bread and circuses and stuff. So, and I, I don't know. I, I've been kind of trying to get rid of a lot of like my attachments for stuff that I don't need. So football was kind of one of them, but, uh, I didn't watch the Super Bowl, which, which would have, I would have said you were crazy, uh, a couple of years ago. I mean, you're living, you're living down south now. Now you're into football. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I don't even watch that. Uh, but um <laughs> Yeah, that I'm not I'm not into American football either. Soccer sounds really boring to watch. But that's just me. I mean, obviously a lot of people really like it, so I'm not talking trash, I'm just saying I'm not into it. <clears throat> Never really been that been into sports at all. I like I like watching skating. I like skating and stuff. I can definitely like X games. I can watch me some X games. Um, yeah, so we should get into this article. It, it says here that uh, we know it sounds a bit crazy, but it's also a bit badass. Sean O'Brien, who is spearheading the Dow, told CNBC. The purpose essentially is to establish an infrastructure so that fans from all walks of life can be owners of the Denver Broncos. That's cool because I've always wanted to be like an owner of the Denver Broncos. Um, the Dow dubbed by the Broncos Dow will need to hit the $4 billion valuation mark to be successful. 
Uh, the initiative, unlike many other DAOs, actually has some political support too. Colorado Governor Jared Polish told CNBC at ETH Denver over the weekend that he would be excited to be a part of the DAO's am- ambitions. And if you guys don't know Jared Polis, he's, um, he really sucks. So if, if you live in Colorado, you're like, yeah, this guy's like super hardcore liberal, uh, wants to take away the guns. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, Jared Polis, he's, he can be interesting because he's like trying to do like new wave shit too. Like, um, he, he was the one who was like, yeah, we, we want to be the first state to accept, uh, Bitcoin for taxes and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, I, hate, I actually hate you so much for that because, because you're not supposed to take, you're not supposed to accept taxes for crypto. Uh, that's like, that like defeats the whole entire purpose of why crypto was created in the first place. The crypto was created to get away from governments and banks. So, uh, anyways, to continue on, it says the challenge will be, it'll take a lot of money, but you know what? If your imagination is big enough, then it can happen. And anything I can do to make it happen, I'd be happy to be said. Uh, DAOs and purchasing potential. This is not the first time a DAO has tried to reach a lofty pur- purchasing goal. November 2021, the Constitution DAO tried to purchase a copy of the U.S. Constitution at um, Sotheby's auction. The DAO raised over $40 million in about a week, but ultimately lost out to Citadel's a- anti-crypto CEO, Ken Griffin. Was he just like trying to outbid them just to be like, fuck off, crypto punks? They make it sound like that, but I don't they know. They kind of do, don't they? <laughs> yeah. They could just be like, anti crypto but... guy bought it. To, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fuck you, but... Crypto punks, fuck off. Oh, this shit. year, Super Dow tried to purchase a Super Bowl ad for Super Bowl 56 dubbed the Crypto Bowl on account of many crypto ads that aired during the game. Super Dow wasn't nearly as successful having only raised about $20,000 far off from the $6.5 million 30 second worth of ad space was going for on the day. So that begs the question, what makes buy the Broncos Dow different apart from political support in the form of governor Polis by the Broncos Dow also comes with an entirely different governance structure. Uh, Derek Sorensen a computer science PhD student at Cambridge University who's advising the by the Broncos DAO told CNBC that the DAO would, if successful, actually give people partial ownership over the Broncos franchise and control over how the team is managed. So as a, as a DAO owner, you would actually have some control over how the team was managed, which is just like, uh, mind blowing. What if it fails? If by the Broncos Dow fails to meet its goal, it's got a backup plan too. Um, should the Dow not raise all the funds necessary? Dow organizers are aiming to raise about 25% of these funds, still $1 billion. And from there, coordinate with traditional investors to make up additional 3 billion required. We want this effort to essentially open up people's eyes to what a DAO can do in the real world and make a tangible connection between this Web3 life and the real world, O'Brien said. I I misheard that then. I'm sorry. I said earlier earlier they were trying to raise a billion through through the DAO and then the other three billion. Another way, I misread that. I didn't realize that was a backup plan. My bad, everybody. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, very interesting though. Yeah, um, yeah. This is uh, this is really cool, man. I like that. Again, it just this gives this gives people the ability to have ownership in like, like something, you know. And I really think that's like how cool would it be if like the small businesses in your community or whatever had you know some sort of like um, you know tokenization program or some way where you could own you know part of you know like. You know, like stocks, but like for real, not like, you know, the, the casino thing that they got going on, like, you know, for real, like, like how much more, 
how much stronger would like communities be, right? Like if you own like part of, you know, like your community, like literally like that, or if you had the ability to do that, that would be so amazing. So I just love this like concept that, you know, even with something like a sports team, you, you could own part of it. How much, I mean, what kind of effect would that have on like, um, accountability and everything, you know, a lot of this stuff, I think a lot of like professional sports, especially, you know, when the government's involved in one way or another, they're, they're, they're really scammy, you know, they're really, uh, you know, it's a way for rich people to avoid taxes. Not that I'm against or, you know, for rich people paying taxes or anything, but it's not fair, right? Because everybody else still has to. So, you know, a lot of this is just, um, I think a lot of like professional sports is just really scammy. If they could actually be like owned by like people, you know, like maybe that gives some sort of more accountability, you know, um, I don't know. I don't know. I sometimes I think that professional sports are just like totally rigged for the gambling industry, but I have no, I have no proof of that, but it's definitely some sort I, of partial conspiracy. I don't want anybody. Have. I don't <laughs> want anybody, anybody to pay taxes. So if there is somebody yeah. not paying taxes, I'm actually happy for it. No, no, no. So. You, you, you know, you know what I'm saying though? It's just like, it's, it's a big, it's a big fucking cronious scammy fucking thing, you know, because they do yeah, that, yeah. you know, while they milk people, you know, <laughs> of all this fucking money and all the fucking merchandising bullshit that goes along with it. You know, the fucking Department of Defense gives them what, like millions of dollars to do the stupid fucking drive the fucking um, veteran around at halftime, you know, in the Zamboni, you know, uh, wave the wave the flags, do the fucking, um, you know, national anthem. Yeah, I like to show up late for the national anthem because I will not like. Part- I just don't want to participate in the uh, national sing along. Yeah, you know, fascist. I've, uh, I've sat through it before. You know, I don't go to a lot of sporting events, but I have gone and I have sat through it. And man, like, even though like I have no personal desire to stand, man, there is that deep ingrained thing of everybody else is standing. And they're looking at me and they think I'm terrible for not standing, you know? So there's like that, like, like deep thing of like, fuck, I should just stand and just avoid the whole fucking thing. So it's, it could be hard to fucking like sit there, you know, like, I'm not going to fucking lie. It could be hard to sit there and be like, nope, I'm not fucking standing. Fuck y'all. Well, you know? well, that's why, that's why I just show up late. I just, then you just avoid it. That's smart. Yeah. That way I don't have to, cause I, cause I don't know. Well, you don't really um, want to get beat up in the parking lot afterwards. By some drunken yeah. fucking football fans. I have either. almost you know what I mean? a fight at a, yeah. at a, at a game. So yeah, that, I um, mean, yeah, motherfuckers will want to fight you over that. Like that's real, you know. And you know, I'd rather not. I just my, rather not do that tonight. My flag, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh man, my father but, uh, was in the military. And it's like, cool, man, good for you. I'm just gonna sit here yeah. and watch the game. I, I just lie and say like I'm injured, you know. <laughs> like, dude, I got a fucking fucked up knee. Fuck off. <laughs> Make him feel bad or something. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's kind of I don't know. Doing the whole Broncos one is just kind of uh, nostalgic for me because yeah. I'd go to Broncos games. Uh, I went to the um, the AFC Championship game. It was with uh, New England and and Denver um, at at Mile High, and yeah, you had you know Peyton Manning and and Tom Brady uh, on the on you know each different both great quarterbacks on each side of it. And uh, I'm I'm not saying like quarterbacks are playing against each other because it's like, you know, they they're not even on the field at the same time. And but, uh, you know, and the, but um, but yeah, they they were both on 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 different teams and they're both amazing quarterbacks and stuff. And um, and the Broncos won that game to go on to the Super Bowl, Super Bowl Fifty, and to win Super Bowl Fifty. So it's it's cool being at that AFC Championship game and. Uh, and uh probably one of the best games like is you know a little bit of a nail biter but uh but yeah one of the best games ever and uh you know they said that Tom Brady like um had bloody socks after that game i mean he got hit a lot like they were on him uh and you know of course Denver had a great defense that year um Manning was not nearly the quarter that was his last that was like one of his last games. That was his last game in Denver for sure. And, uh, and his last game was that Super Bowl 50. But, uh, but yeah, he, he wasn't, you know, that was, that was on his down, on his down. Um, definitely not his peak, uh, 
as a quarterback. But anyways, yeah, cool, cool game. And never forget it. Never forget that game and, and all the other Broncos games that, that I went to. And um, it w- would be really cool to be an owner of this team. But, uh, you, you but yeah, we'll, we'll see how. Mm, no, I just um, I just think that there's better. Do you so? Do you think that there's potential? So let's say let's say someone was to get in on this. Let's say it happens. Let's say let's say it goes down. Is this just like a thing where you get to say that? Oh, I own some of the Broncos, and maybe you get to make some decisions, or do you get a chance to make some money at this? Like, do you get some revenue? Like, if they make money, like, are you getting like, well, like I if, would, if you like like would you be able to make money off of this shit if it went through? I I, th- I think you could. Because I mean, as an owner, you you're part owner of it, so I think they would divvy up the, um, I think they would divvy up the profits to the. Uh, what if the, what would what would go to the losses? owner? I mean, what would go to what would go to like a single owner or a group of owners? I think it would all go up to. I think profits would all go to the um, to the DAO and whoever owns. However many tokens would this is just my guess. I mean, right, we get, a, get this article, and this get, article get doesn't necessarily have the uh, the specifics of of all that stuff. Yeah, but, it's, a, um, it's a pretty it's a pretty short article. Um, but, but 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 that's that's what I would guess would happen. Like mm-hmm. you know, if you're part owner of the Broncos through this DAO, if you owned like a like if you owned one percent or something, which would be insane for four billion. I, I can't. I, I don't have the uh, the math on top of my head, but um. Or just like a, even a half of percent or a quarter of a percent. I, I know. I, I, want, I want to be like. I'm I guessing like you would get. Mr. Smarty Pants would be like, dude, you just moved the decimal over. But then I'm like, I don't even know how to do that right now. I have to like get a piece of paper. <laughs> so, <laughs> it should be easy, but I don't know. I suck at math. What do you think? Let's say like the team like loses money. Like the, can that happen? Like that must be able to happen if like a team's mismanaged, right? And it loses money. Like. I don't know. I'm like, who pays for it? Like, if it's crypto, but I'm sure that it it wouldn't. This isn't like this wouldn't be like an anonymous thing, you know. I mean, I assume that. I assume you wouldn't be able to do this like non KYC, like buy a part of it and own a part of it and get money. That'd probably be pretty tough. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Uh... So, yeah, yeah, I mean, you'd probably so have to like, be on if, file as a right. So then it's like if there's or something, if there's losses, and they like come after you, you know. <laughs> like, I mean, I guess if you're part owner, man, I mean, you're part owner for better or for worse. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm I'm not sure how like how the, all the specifics would work, but um, would work out. But I'm curious. I'm gonna yeah, keep an eye on this thing because this is pretty fucking cool. Yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. Now they want to get into it is because a um a like it if you're an agorist right like you're you're kind of like thinking about what the future is going to be like well what's going on in the future and it's it's you know we're kind of like collapsitarians in a sense because we're you know we're working we're working outside of the government. So we're not providing, we're, we're trying to not provide them with resources, right? So we kind of want like their systems to come down in a sense. So I think like every agorist is kind of collapsitarian in that sense. So, but also not only that, but fundamentally you're, we're thinking about, you know, um, the dollar collapsing and, uh, you know, all this economic chaos that we're going to see here probably pretty soon. And I don't know. I just don't think that it's going to be like the best time to be an owner of a sport (laughs) franchise during, during like economic, yeah, during economic collapse. Like I don't, th- that doesn't really sound like very attractive to me. Now, like nostalgia, you're, you're believe me, nostalgia crumbles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, nostalgia has me like, you know, like kind of bright eyed towards this thing. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, if, if we're talking about economic chaos and 
and uh, stuff like that. I think um, I, I don't necessarily think it'd be the best time. <laughs> that, 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 that's a good thought. I got to admit, I wasn't expecting you to bring it back around to that. That was, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> You're like, yeah, it's just not, it's just not economically, you know, prudent. <laughs> <laughs> own something like that right now <laughs> you know i'm kind of hoping that this whole thing doesn't work out so i really don't think the national football league is going to stick around yeah that's probably fair or if they are well i mean or if they are selling it you'd probably be able to get like a cheaper price i mean who knows right like if you yeah. had bu- if you buy like a certain cryptocurrency today and there is like some kind of hyperinflationary event who knows i mean you could be able you could possible i mean depending on what it is um if like the cards fell right you you might be able to buy like a whole entire hotel chain with it or something you know you may not have a lot of customers at first um but uh but this has happened throughout history too like after the after the um what was it after the great depression and, and after world war ii there was a guy who bought like a major hotel with with a couple gold coins, uh, so you know stuff like that. Stuff like that happens. So I mean, mm-hmm. if you have if you have the right resources during the right time, and you you know invest in certain things at the right time, you you can really make out. So I mean, you know, who knows? I could end up buying the Broncos for you know. 500 million 500 million dollars and uh you know i don't have don't i don't even you know i don't have nearly that much but let's say there is a hyperinflationary event that solved my assets up like way past that price um whatever that is you know the equivalency of uh later on and uh and yeah i end up buying the you know, Denver Broncos are 500 million or something because this Dow can't, uh, <laughs> can't like sustainably hold on to it or something. You know, who knows, who knows, right? So, um, all right. Let's take a quick second to shout out Agorist Acre Seeds. Agoristacres.com stocks a variety of seeds for your garden or homestead. They also have really cool packaging instead of those silly paper envelopes. Buy seeds with crypto, support the counter economy and become self sustaining today. Agorist Acres offers fast shipping, so you can get started right away. Make sure you use code NEXUS10 at the checkout for 10% off of your orders. Also, they will donate a portion of the sale to Agorist Nexus, helping to bring you all the great content you expect. All right, let's get on with it. But yeah, it's not really the time to be, you know, I think like a lot of sporting stuff and uh, fine clothing and um, like movie houses and stuff, I think a lot of the luxury stuff is going to be, you know, during a, an economic catastrophe, a lot of the luxury stuff is not really like, um, you know, people tend to cut the their luxury budget down quite a bit. So, you know, you're, you're, you're more or less looking to just survive and you're buying like things that are essential. Um, to your survival so a lot of the luxury stuff uh is just um isn't in my my opinion not really something you that you may want to focus on um yeah it's probably just wiser all around in life you know what i mean focus on the necessities save some money nah fuck that drop it all on the broncos go broncos (laughs) instead of just being frivolous yeah, I'm trying to get better about it. I'm all in now, Dad. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna own a sports team. It's gonna be the shit. You know, there's an episode of The Simpsons where Homer uh, said like his greatest uh, dream was to own the the uh, Dallas Cowboys. And yeah, and then he got the Denver Broncos. He got the Denver yeah. Broncos. Yeah, he's like, yeah. Marge, you just don't understand. I'm like, no, Homer. <laughs> yeah, no, you got the right team, buddy. You got the right. Yeah, one. she's like, come on, don't be the Denver Broncos. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's like, you just don't understand football. Oh, uh, yep, yep, good times. So we want to. Broncos are better. 
<laughs> well, yeah. well, I mean, this was, I mean, that episode was like 19. Yeah, that, this is when, yeah, this is when the Cowboys so. were like all the yeah. age too. So. Yeah, so I don't know their history or anything, but I assume maybe they weren't as, as good then. Famously not as good. We done with the Broncos for today or? We got any other never, thoughts? Never done with the Broncos. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that's all we got for that. Um, right. You know, another thing too is like, do you want to be owner with like, you know, 50,000 other people too. It's, I don't know. I, I think it'd kind of be, um, probably have very minimal voting rights, you know, and we all know yeah, how we feel about it'd voting. Be very, you know, it's very this. chaotic. Yeah, yeah. I'm not really much for like voting and I mean, obviously, like in the, I mean, I, I don't, I don't have a problem with voting in terms of like the private sector being like some mm-hmm. kind of shareholder. Don't get me wrong, but, um, we don't, but, yeah, I think I'm kind of Trump. You know, like yeah. if, if you don't have a lot of it, which obviously some people will buy a lot of this stuff and some people will buy almost like, you know, the smallest amount you can buy. If you bought the smallest amount you can buy, you're like a U.S. voter, you know, and the amount of power you have to control anything. We're really the people who have a lot of the shares, you know, they're like the fucking, you know, the elites and whatnot. So, you know, they'll be the ones actually making the decision, which, hey, for better, or for worse, you know, but it's the fact of the matter is you're not going to have much of a say. Even if you have a vote, you know. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. And with that kind of collapse, I'm just not sure how much, like you, like you were saying earlier, like what if, what if the franchise loses money? Like what happens? Yeah. Are you on the hook? Even with your tiny little portion? Time when <laughs> they start sending you a bill. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, that does just make it really just sound like the way democracy works, <laughs> like in government and in real life, you know? Uh, the little guy with no say gets gets stuck foot in the bill. Oh, well. Well, with that said, um, we've got a, another dial that we're looking at. And th- this one's interesting because it's the... Um, it's the anonymous, uh, it's like the anonymous hackers, like we are anonymous, we are legion guys. And, um, even like the DAO, if you go to anontoken.com, um, it's all like green and black and hackerish and, and stuff. And, uh, it is a pretty cool site. Yeah. It kind of looks like the matrix with all the <laughs> O's and ones going. Yeah. Um, but um, but the goal, I guess, here's the goal. It says, the goal of Anonymous is simple. Revolutionize, decentralize, and create anti-government democracy made made for the people by the people. And I'm not really one for, like, democracy, like, a pro-government democracy. I don't think I'd have anything against, like, an anti-government Um democracy per se i mean i just um just the word democracy alone like makes me cringe a little bit because it's like yeah it's like deep like demonocracy kind of like is kind of like the way i think about democracy but um but yeah i i I, you know that's kind of what DAOs are right like they're kind of like um they can be somewhat like you know, decentralized democracies. Uh, well, how do you, you know, get... you got to make, make decisions as an organization, you know, I mean, it's, well, yeah, th- I mean, that, that's what, what, what else are you going to do? do? You know, you're going to, you're going to vote what on blockchain, it. <laughs> that, that's what, that's what blockchains do too. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they, they come through consensus. Well, and, they, and, they have to come to consensus through, you know, um, most of the time voting. So. And, and let me just say one thing real quick about that, like democracy too, and, and the way that the way that they may be using it here. And I don't know, I didn't write this website, but just like the word capitalism, right, can have a lot of different meanings or feels depending on who you're talking to, right? Um, you know, I think democracy is kind of the same way. I think it goes anything for ever, all the way from where people just oh, just democ- it just means good. They don't even care about the actual meaning. It's just we're bringing democracy, and democracy is good, and we want to keep democracy, and you know, they use it like that. And then, you know, there's the, like, actual, like, we're like, okay, everybody votes kind of thing. But, you know, I've also heard it phrased that, like, true democracy is, like, a free market. Because, you know, like, the term everybody knows you vote with your dollar, right? Like, people are making decisions on individual levels. And based on those decisions, which, of course, are market transactions, 
that's how things get done. That's what, how, what guides the invisible hand, et cetera, or the invisible hand guides it. And I rephrase that, but you know, that's just the general way that, that things happen. People start investing in sectors that people are more interested in, want to spend their money. You know, it, it, it just guides society. So, you know, I've kind of heard like, that's, that's true democracy. And like, in that sense, if that's how you're going to define democracy, then I'm all fucking for it. You know? Um, so, 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 so yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't remember what it's called, but it's called like whatever democracy um, that, that phrasing is. I'll have to look into it, but it's, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I mean, I, I guess that would be like true democracy where everybody gets their fucking vote and your vote matters as much as it should matter, which is however much you're willing to spend on it, I guess, <laughs> you know, which is basically just market transactions. Yeah, I mean, uh, Rafael Verde, he defines Bitcoin as like a meritocracy of uh, of miners. So, so yeah, the, I mean, it's, um, you know, to... You, you get what you that, deserve. That, <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I mean, that's how you, you come to consensus. Now, I mean, if you don't like what the meritocracy is doing, you can, of course, you know, fork off. And, and that's what happened with, with Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. So, um, and, and I think Bitcoin... You know, people think that Bitcoin just only forked off once. It actually, I think there's like 80 different forks. Now, the main one was the, the, uh, the Bitcoin cash fork, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's forked quite a bit. So, uh, but yeah, so the next line here, um, we will bring capitalism, totalitarianism, dictatorships and corruption to an end. And I think what they mean by now, again, uh, you know, with what Dag was saying earlier, like everybody's got like different definitions of stuff. So like a lot of times when you say the word capitalism, people have like this like word for it. And I myself am, am not even trying to use that word because it's just, it's, I'm just tired of trying to explain like, hey, my definitions. You're, you're finally I, over it too, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I'm just tired. I'm just tired of it. So yeah, I just I, I say, feel you, man. Me too. I don't even, you know. So my definition is free market. So like, yeah. I'm for free markets, but I think their definition of capitalism here is like cronyism. Yeah, more um, cronyist kind of thing. Yeah, I'd agree but with that. It's like it's like, and me myself, like if I've got a problem with cronyism, I'm not going to try to fight cronyism. Really, all you, to end cronyism, really, all you have to do is just eliminate government. And then there, like, you can't have, you know, you don't have any monopolies on violence or, um, you know, powers over, uh, regulations and stuff. So really to end, to end, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm trying to fight cronyism because really, if I want to end cronyism, um, you, you know, the easiest way to do that is to get rid of government. So. You, you fight the system by going to the root. You don't fight the, the leaves and the branches. So, uh, but, uh, anyways, it's project a non token equals fuck the system. So, uh, a non token abbreviation AT is a Binance smart chain token built on the BEP 20 protocol. All right. We got to so, take a pause right there. Um, man, I know you're on this. You probably had a similar thought as me. Um, you mentioned it a little bit before we started recording, but on the, the Binance smart chain and I encourage, like, isn't Binance like, like Coinbase and all that in the sense that like they, like they comply with government stuff and they, like they help write the software that, that fucks with, with, uh, crypto users, you know, on behalf of the government or am I, am I incorrect on that? Cause I thought Binance was like a big, like, you know, corporate They're definitely a big, a uh, big crypto exchange and uh-huh. they are completely compliant with, uh, with government. So, uh, me personally, I'm not sure why you'd pick, um, uh, Binance unless you were like trying to like maximize like profits and stuff. Uh-huh. I mean, I could be wrong. I really want them on so I, so we can, um, like talk about the token more, but, uh, but yeah, I'm not sure why. Well, because we talked about I'm not like sure if why. A, if it's a privacy coin or not, and like it doesn't say that it is. So if they're not trying to be a privacy coin, then you know, I don't know. Well, that's whole that's Whatever, whole that's like anonymous whole thing is like uh, you know, 
that that's that's how they came up. They came up with like um well they came up through 4 4chan, right? And it was just like this group of jokesters who created like the first memes and stuff. And um but then they started getting political and like a major reason why they are the way they are today is because of the whole privacy NSA Edward Snowden um Edward Snowden uh situation. So like they're all about privacy, so I'm not sure why you 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 would pick uh Binance, you know, the Binance smart chain. Um like if it were me, I would pick and I was I was looking at this last night, I'd pick like Darrow. Um uh, because you can write smart contracts and, and create tokens on um, on Darrow. So, and, like, if I were focused on privacy, I would pick Darrow myself. Um, that's the one I pick. Uh, but um, but yeah, that's just me, and I don't know the whole like what their entire reasoning behind this is. But like, if you're looking at a hacker group that cares about privacy, um. And I'd love to hear more about this. I just don't know why they'd pick Binance Smart Chain. So um, anyways, we'll get into the token here. There's a total supply of $100 million. Um, the buy transaction fee is 10%, which seems kind of high. The sell transaction fee is 12%. Um, and total reflection rewards 9%. Yeah. Yeah, so I was curious, like, because yeah, the the buy and sell transaction fees, yeah, that seems like exceedingly high. Am I am I missing something about that, or is there a reason that they're supposed to be that high? And then I don't know what reflection rewards are either. Yeah, I'm not sure what re, what the reflection this, rewards are now. Now this whole thing's very looking... new. They don't have much like on the roadmap. Like they're still in like Q1, and there's very few things accomplished. They're still very new, and credit to them. Yeah, this. To my knowledge, this just came out within like the last month. So I mean, you're we're probably the first ones you're going to hear about this. Um, Heard we're here probably first, like folks. one of the first ones. We, yeah, we're probably the first ones where you're going to hear about this through. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Probably, but, uh, I'll go with that. Yeah, I can sell that. <laughs> we're the first. It's the first I'm hearing about it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I try to keep up with stuff. So I mean, when I found this, I was like, oh, cool. Let's. Uh, yeah, and then the other DAO story came out, and I was like, "Yeah, we're definitely doing episodes." Yeah. On this, but... <laughs> so yeah, yeah so, I, I'm not exactly sure what the um, like if whenever you sell the token, your you you your your fee for selling it is like twelve percent of whatever you sell. So that's that's pretty high. Well, I'm curious if that's not like supposed to be to fund something. Maybe it's supposed to be high because it's supposed to be funding something. You know. Yeah. Uh, Probably funding the DAO. I mean, um, yeah, for whatever they're trying to accomplish, you know, they don't go into a ton of detail. So, <laughs> yeah, I wish this webpage had more, um, more stuff. We'll, we'll go over, there's a mission statement at the bottom, but we'll go over that in a minute. And, uh, and then, yeah, well, when I was looking at the, um, there's a cool thing about this token is that you can, I was on their Telegram group. And they were talking about staking it. So you can't, that might be another reason why they went with the Binance Smart Chain is because you can't stake it for, uh, you know, but you can also stake the Ethereum, the Ethereum, um, chain. I'm not sure if you can do, you could probably do that with Darrow. I mean, it's, it's just basic smart contract, right? So, <clears throat> but, um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting, um, and now they go into the mechanics of this thing, the CD mechanics. And there's like anti sniper bots activated, anti well dump activated, buyback and burn activated. So I'm not sure how you would, um, you would stop wells from just dumping on this thing. Um, but, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm just not sure how how you'd uh, you'd do that. Yeah, I don't know. And let's say where you can only sell so much at a time or something, right? And then a non token uh, roadmap here, securing strategic partners. They said they've done that. 
developing a premium brand. They haven't done that yet. Core team expansion, they've got that checked. So apparently they've expanded their core team. Uh, dashboard DAP, not checked. Multi-chain integration, checked. Um, whatever this is, Certic <laughs> Audit, audit. Sex, sex, uh, CEX <laughs> listings. Yeah. I, guess, I guess you pronounce that sex. Yeah, I don't know. NFT collection development. I guess they're going to do NFTs. I mean, okay. Um, hopefully it's like a worthwhile NFT instead of like JPEGs and shit. Uh, official soundtrack. I mean, I don't have any problems with JPEG NFTs. It's just, you know, I mean, you're anonymous, you know, like. We can do better. Yeah, you, you could do something cool. Um, official soundtrack. I'm not sure, like, why that's even like part of the roadmap the Sarah, uh, yeah. of the, yeah. <laughs> but I guess you want like a soundtrack for the token or something. Um, Rage against the machine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, staking stage one. They do not have that checked. Uh, website V2. They've got that checked. White paper V2. They said they've got that checked. Um, so yeah, I, I'd want to look at their white paper too, but. Um, anyways, where was I? A non token expansion announcement. So apparently they're going to have an announcement. And this is, that was all quarter one. Now quarter two, they've got NFT collection exclusive presale. None of these are checked because this is quarter two. NFT marketplace launch. A non dex. A non verse concept and storyline development. I'm not sure. Is that like metaverse? I don't know. Tier one CEX listings. Expanding team, Anon mobile wall development. Quarter three, they've got Game Studio Development Partnership, further CX listings, onboarding strategic investors, website V3, white paper V3, AI upgrade to Anon X, Anon mobile wallet beta release, Anon verse introduction, integration with other metaverses V1, Use to earn project concept introduction. Oh, sorry. This is uh quarter four starting with a non first introduction. So maybe they're going to do like a metaverse thing with this. Who knows? Integration with other metaverses. Yeah. Um, use to earn project concept introduction, expanding team, staking stage two, uh, remove buy sell taxes. So that's if, cool how they have. I wonder if the transaction fees will go down if that's what that means. The remove buy sell taxes. Yeah. yeah maybe maybe no. they're just high right now while they build them or something. I don't know. Maybe they're going to eliminate taxes altogether. I don't know. I mean, that'd be dope. But um, but yeah, they're, they're probably talking about the uh, the transaction fees, but they didn't use tax there. So yeah, yeah, they didn't use phrasing. tax, and they're talking about their fees. So yeah, I don't know. Um, but anyways, the. Anon token mission statement. Anon token AT is predicated upon a devolved system which seeks to disrupt the traditional fi- financial system by providing decentralized infrastructure for payments, assets, and even digital art. The project is driven by the anonymous community which has given a voice to the people of the world and kept a watchful eye over the internet for over a decade. The growing surveillance state and the corruption of the banking elite were the two main concerns that fueled the anonymous movement. See, I was right. It says the growing surveillance state. Um, So, yeah, I mean, they do care about privacy for sure. Anyways, uh, where did I leave off here? That fueled the anonymous movement. um, But with the advent of blockchain technology, the people now have a weapon to fight the two evils. Anon token is a low Inflation supply asset that is used by validators, developers, and users to participate in earn and rewards, as well as to transfer fees, service collateral for second secondary um, BUSD, and to participate in future protocol governance. The token will cultivate a deflationary finance DeFi ecosystem facilitating privacy from the surveillance surveillance state while annexing power from the bankers that continually suppress high climbers. Cool. So, yeah, the, their mission statement kind of sounds cool. I'm I'm not, like, completely sold on it because, 
Um, I just don't know, like, how that differs from, like, what Bitcoin or some other cryptocurrency. There's not really any details, you know, um, as to what, you know, what they're going to do. Again, to credit, they're they're still new, so I'm not talking trash. I'm just saying they don't, there's not much here, really. Yeah, yeah. I don't have anything bad to say. I'm just not, I'm just trying to figure it out. Like, like, um, you know, there, there's so many, uh, like blockchain projects out there that, that, uh, they seem like they do, you know, better, a better job or if not better than, uh, than anything like that, like a token on a, uh, on the Binance smart chain could, could do by itself. So I just, um, I want to know more. I'm not trying to bad talk the project. Um, a lot of the stuff aid that the anonymous group has done, I've been like huge fans of. Um, they came out with a video recently talking about like free Ross. I pushed it on Twitter. So if you guys want to see that, um, scroll down, I'll get the exact date for you here in a second. I just got on Twitter. Um, let me see. But yeah, I posted the um the Anon. Let me see here. You familiar with Pancake Swap at all? I've heard of it. That's not the same thing as like Cake Wallet, is it? It's not Pancake, is it? No. no. Okay. Cake okay. Wallet is for the for the Monero chain. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. The, re- uh, the reason I was saying something is they've got uh, where it says here on the a non-token uh, site where it's a, click the button that says buy now and it takes you to a cake wallet. I'm sorry, pancake swap. Sorry, but it comes up as like cake is, I guess, their ticker symbol. But I guess that's where you get it. Can you buy it? I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. <clears throat> Let's see what we say the um the ticker symbol was AT. Yeah. Yeah, is it an on coin market cap? That's interesting. If you're in their telegram group, they'll tell you like um like what the price is and stuff. But uh yeah, AT a non token. It's twenty one cents right now. And when you're in there, um when you're in there when you're in their um, Telegram group, it's like we've we've all got diamond hands and stuff. Uh, but it seems like their coin started about ten cents, and it looks like um, it looks like yeah, it's only been around since February sixth. So this thing is like super new. If you go to um, all time on Coin Market Cap. February sixth is the first date that there's a, like a like a price on it. Right. Yeah, they 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 did come out with the video recently. I'll repost that on Twitter if you guys want to see that. And the repost date will be February twenty second. So if you go to um, Agorst and Agorst Nexus on Twitter, um, I'll have that video for you guys where Anonymous is talking about uh, Free Ross Ulbricht. And um, yeah, ha- hats off to them for. You know, not only bringing awareness to to free Ross, but um, you know, but also, but but also, you know, supporting Ross and saying, "Hey, this guy just built the website," and uh, and stuff. So, really cool of them to do that. And uh, yeah, you know, it's just uh, it's awesome. I wish, I wish, uh, I wish Ross, I wish. I wish he would be freed. I just, um, you know, hopefully we can, uh, hopefully we can see that. Ottawa Gestapo. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think that's I guess, the thing um, with the horses, I guess somebody right? made a, uh, no, somebody made a uh, page on Twitter called Ottawa Gestapo. Um, oh, no shit. Yeah, and it's got like Justin Castro, Justin Trudeau wearing like a, a uh, German Nazi hat or whatever military military Nazi hat. Anyways, 
Um, yeah, Twitter kind of distracts me, so I'll get off that now. But, um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all I got. You got anything else, Zach? Um, they do. A non token has a a Telegram. If you guys want to check that out, um, I'll try to find a link for that in the link description. And yeah, DAOs DAOs seem really cool. I um I definitely want to part. Will participate in a DAO one day in the future. I just uh. I just want to find the right one, right? It's like a, just like you want to find the right woman, you know, yeah. same thing. So. Game of Cinderella or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Gotta yeah, the no, right shoe, you know? yeah. Well, well, you know, I mean, everything from, you know, cause you know, government has total control of like, like money all around, right? Cause it's not just like, like, you know, like, like money and like the federal reserve, but like, okay, they've taken over charity. They've taken over, um, you know, a, um, uh, innovation, you know, education, and I mean, all those dollars that are being forced to go to that. So anything that we can do, you know, like this, it can sort of help break away from that. I'm just really excited about it's over my head. It's for those young kids to figure out, but you know, I'm excited about it anyhow. Right. Yeah. So, but no, that's a, I guess that's what I got. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I guess that's it. We got a quote. All right. Here we go. I'm much more confident with crypto than with banks or fiat currency because I can actually control it and the money supply is transparent, stated up front. It makes online shopping a lot easier and a lot safer. Eric Voorhees. Nice. And yeah, it's, um, yeah, I'm a lot, uh, I'm a lot more confident with crypto too. And, uh, if anyone's ran a business and so, like had somebody purchase something and then like you ship the product to them and then they say, um, they say that the product's never been sent. So you're out of the product and the, the, uh, the money that they sent you. You'll learn to hate banking. You'll learn to hate traditional banking too. So I think, um, and for the big bankers, like that's like they don't get those kind of penalties. They don't. Um, they just take transaction fees and and stuff like that. So they don't have to really worry. All their services are through the bank, so they don't really have to worry about um, any of that. So they never get screwed on any of that. And uh, and yeah, with with crypto, it's like it's a one way. You know, it's it's a one way deal. So. Um, and you know, if, if people, I'm not saying that, that people, that some businesses never wrong people because that happens all the time. Uh, but, um, but again, if you don't, if, yeah, yeah, if you don't, you know, know who, you, know who you're shopping with and, um, and if somebody does like screw you over, go with somebody else. So, yeah. And I think that's also where like good, like platforms come into play too. You know what I mean? If some, let's say an Amazon or something, but you know, probably not Amazon, but you know, rating systems, et cetera, where, you know, maybe you can feel maybe this, you know, this entity will help you if there's a dispute, you know, something like that. So, you know, there's always, you know, ways other than, other than them just, um, just doing, uh, you know, refunds and, and, um, gosh, what do they call them when you, uh, when you refuse to pay it? I don't remember what it's called, but yeah, your credit card, you know, the thing you're talking about. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have that on off the top of my head here, so I can't remember, oh, but, uh, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, man, I feel you. Cool. Of course. Next is that. Peace. I'm plugging to the Agora's Nexus. We need the whole community connected. We're the alternative collective. Self sufficient and effective. Sell the rug from effective. Each one, sell the rug from effective.